Welcome to the new. Every experience with God's Word promises to be refreshing and transformational. Receive today's message with high expectations as it brings power, light, and a fresh anointing to your life. Hallelujah. All right, let's get into the Word. Let's take our confession and we'll go into the Word. All right. One, two, ready and read. Anointed to see and hear the sounds, instructions, and announcements of heaven. I am the new and all things are new for me. I carry the life of God in me, hence my life is God's life. My mind is the mind of Christ and my hands are God's heads. Take a look at my life, it is the life of God. The zeal of the Lord is eager towards me and has performed his functions in my life. I am the new, full of joy, hope, love, grace, and peace. I dispense God's love and greatness in my city. For I and the children that the Lord has given to me, we are for signs and wonders. We are the new. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray this morning that your word come to us unhindered, uninterrupted by any satanic influence or activity. I pray this morning that you would open our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and our heart to perceive what your spirit is saying to us right now. In Jesus' mighty name. The church says aloud, Amen. Amen. All right. This morning we are talking about uh, the subject, how to hear the voice of God, following the voice of God and following God's plans for your life. Now, this is one of the most critical, and I always like to say it, um, one of the most critical subjects in the Bible. One of the most critical subjects in the Bible. Um, it is very crucial, very important that even all that Jesus said that the Holy Spirit was going to come and do was bordered around the subject of the ability of the saints to hear the voice of God. It says that the Holy Spirit will come and it will do what? It will guide you into all truth. And so the coming of the Holy Spirit was not only to give the saints and believers a goosebumps feeling of the fact that the Godhead now resides amongst men. The coming of the Holy Spirit was so that we can be led in the path to which God has designed us to, be walk, to walk in. You know, what is very also important to note is that every of us believers on the earth, oh, non-believers also, God has a specific plan for your life. There is a reason why at this time of your life, God sent you to this place. There's a reason why. There's a reason why you did not come in the days of Melchizedek or Methuselah. There's a reason why you came at this time T. And before you formed you, the scripture says, he knew you. He had ordained you as a prophet unto all nations. The ordination of God does not happen when you're on earth alone. Those are earthly ordination that confirms to man what God has done in heaven. Divine ordinations already occurred before the foundations of the earth. And so before he formed you, he set you aside, set you apart, and put his hands and his anointing upon you. And the anointing, remember, is not anointing oil. It's not oil. The anointing is the capacity of God, like the blessing, all that God has, all that God is, and all that God can do. The anointing is the possibilities of God. And so that anointing God puts upon you and says, the moment you step into this assignment, that anointing will always speak for your life. And so you have that anointing upon your life. Now, the crucial thing is that many people allow that anointing go to waste because the anointing cannot function without the direction of the Holy Spirit. Do you get what I'm saying? So also, your life, you will not function adequately and effectively if you are not led by the Spirit of God. Everything Jesus did on the earth, it was led by God. Jesus knew where to be part time. Do you know that even the birth of Jesus was designed from the foundation of the earth? So part time, Jesus knew where he ought to be and who he ought to be with. This subject of hearing the voice of God is so crucial. And you know why it's so crucial and so important? Also, it's because there are so many doctrines and so many teachings out there that tends people to swing them on the sides of the pendulum. So when it comes to um, what you call uh, being led by God, most people operate in guesswork, assuming and hoping that's the voice of God. But you see, the scriptures is very clear that as a believer, one who is born again, 
one who has the life of God, meaning the life of the eternal, there are some rights and benefits to that life. And one of the benefits of rights that you have, it's the legal tender God gave to you, is the benefits and the ability to hear his voice uncompromised. Yeah. Listen, I bet to say this to you here. It is one of your packages in redemption. It is your inheritance. It's your rights. I tell you something very deep. God is not doing you a favor speaking to you. Oh, my goodness. You didn't hear that. No. I'm not doing my daughter a favor speaking to her. So also, God is not doing me a favor speaking to me. In fact, I want to speak to my daughter more. So also, God wants to speak to me more. Why? Because you must also understand that God's divine purpose in your life it is God's greatest priority that you fulfill that purpose so his inability to communicate with you is also short changing himself oh did you hear what I said there so it is critical for God that you must hear him because your purpose is not for you it's for him the fulfillment of your assignment on the earth doesn't bring glory to you it brings to him so it's important for God that you actually hear his voice so God will do everything required for you to hear his voice but the biggest problem about this is that many times God is doing what he needs to do by speaking but men are not doing what they need to do by hearing and you see it is so easy to hear the voice of God it has taken preachers and take, has taken also religion to complicate the hearing of God's voice and so the hearing of God's voice is a mystery to many believers though we believe that God speaks but we don't believe that God is going to speak to us and it's a subject that is the most I'm telling you the honest truth is the most simple to understand how to hear the voice of God you know I say this all the time there comes a point in your life guesswork is no longer required a point in your life and I tell you the honest truth everyone in this room you are in that time T of your life that you cannot afford to continue with guesswork you must know in your knower, like they say. You must know in your inner man exactly what God wants you to do. Because you see, I always say it this way, that decision determines direction and direction determines destination. Meaning destiny. So every decision that you make will ultimately determine your direction. And your direction would ultimately determine your destination. And so you don't even have that time anymore. There's a purpose of God on your inside. There's assignment of God on your inside. There's something God, and I tell you this by the truth of God, that ministry and destiny is time sensitive. Time sensitive. Oh yeah, time sensitive. There are certain things, can, can you imagine, can you imagine a professional boxer who wants to start boxing at the age of 75? That's at 75, he's now going to the gym. Say, I'm, I'm going to, it's only Bashali. <laughs> or um, 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 a, a skater. There are certain things that is in the prime of your life. That is why Jesus did not enter, I'm telling you the honest truth. Jesus started ministry at a certain age bracket. There is a time T of your life in which God puts a burden on you and the anointing placed upon you must speak to the heavens and this is why it is very crucial for you to hear the voice of God it's very important for you to hear the voice of God you cannot do guessworks again listen guessworks if the Godhead doesn't do guesswork then you are not required to do it listen I want you to have this consciousness do you know that every time I'm faced between a decision to make I'm not trying to be sure if God is really speaking because it's always speaking. It's always speaking. Because he knows that I want to fulfill his purpose. He knows. So it's important for him to speak. It's important for him to speak. You know, there are times when we teach doctrines as though it's all on us. But I tell you things, it's also on him. It's also on him. Now, can you imagine as I'm leading the new now with the thousands of people God has helped us to have and the many things God wants to do in the next coming years. Now, can you imagine God is not speaking to me? Now, think about your life. What will happen to your life? If God refused to speak to say, I'd vex. Now, do you know that just because my daughter puts and throws away my food while I'm eating, 
would not mean that for the rest of my life I would just say at the vex I'm not going to follow you talk again these things we call unpardonable sin can we can I enter God is not against you the devil makes you feel and let me tell you something when we talk about oh yeah, thank you Jesus Oh, thank you, Lord. All right, I'll run. I so that I can, I can get into it towards the end. Now, do you know that the devil makes a lot of people feel as though what you do and what you don't do causes God's attention and God's spiritual signal to cease from you. And it's also a concept, listen to this, it's a concept in our mental faculty and it's a spiritual blockage from the spirit of the new age called religion that helps people believe that heaven is that sky. Hear me? So many people believe, and I'm talking to many people here, that heaven is the sky is the cloud so when we think about heaven we think about a location called the sky but you see heaven is not the sky heaven is a spiritual location are you hear what i'm saying it's a location in the spirit it is not above the sky in fact i beg to say to you that heaven is within you so god is not resident in a particular location he rules in heaven but sits in the affairs of men so the God trying to speak to you is not a God that wants to send something from heaven. Everything you need to know about the Godhead is inside of you. Do you have the Holy Ghost? Then, come on. Many times when I'm confused, I'm not looking for an answer external. I'm looking at it internal. Because if I have the answer inside of me, this is the problem for many people. They are looking for what is inside, outside. It's inside of you. I carry the Holy Ghost inside of me. And listen, the Holy Ghost is a talking spirit. Don't you know that? He's always talking. He loves to talk. Glory be to God. How do I know that? The first attribute and description of Jesus about the Holy Spirit was things that had to do with being talk, to be talking. It would guide you into all truth. It would guide you. There are many things I want to say to you, but you can't retain it and I can't take it right now. But when the spirit of truth comes, it would. Meaning that the things I'm saying that you can't hear now or you can't comprehend or understand, when that Holy Spirit comes, it would say it to you and it will break it down further for you. So is on, somebody say on God. So when you are thinking on God, it's also on God to speak to you. It's only a bad father who would stop speaking to his child because the child did something wrong. Don't let the devil steal from you anymore. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. So it says very boldly, it's my right to hear the voice of God. Glory to God. It's, yeah, yeah, it's your right. It's your right. Glory be to God. All right, Romans chapter 8 and verse 14. Romans 8 and verse 14. The Bible says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 10 and verse 27, it says, My sheep hears my voice. Are you God's sheep? Do you hear his voice? It says, My sheep hears my voice. It says, The voice of a stranger they would not follow. My sheep hears my voice. My sheep hears my voice. My sheep hears my voice. Do you know that every member of the new, if you are passing, let me give an example, maybe um, a bus stop, and you're just walking past, and you begin to hear a voice. People, I mean, in a bus stop, you expect that it's crowded, people are making noise, everyone is talking, it's very noisy. And you hear a loud music, all right, or you hear a sermon by me preaching. Because you've gotten used to hearing P.S.'s voice over and over and over again, what happens to you? You look back, yes or no? Because you want to be sure 
Is that PS or not? Why? Because you have mastered by conditioning. Listen. You have mastered by conditioning that on Tuesday you will come for service, on Sunday you will come for service. So that constant conditioning for one year, three months, six years, five years, 20 years, the constant conditioning of hearing my voice helps you to know my voice when you hear it. The problem of hearing God sometimes is that people have not entered into the place of being conditioned. Because you see, for you to constantly know and know my voice is because you come to church every week. Yeah, week in, week out. Week in, week out. Week in, week out. If that's the same thing with your spiritual devotion, hearing the voice of God would not be a problem. The reason why sometimes it seems like I'm not quite sure is because most times your conditioning with him external influences are tampered with that thing so you would know people who the only way they hear god's voice is through a prophet and that's okay some people the only way they hear god's voice is what their mom tells them some people the only way they hear god's voice is what the media say some people the only way they hear god's voice is to put out a fleece meaning that if it's rain today then it means god wants me to marry him then you will see rain. I'm telling you, that's the day it will rain. Glory be to God. So let's open our Bible to the book of Genesis chapter 1 and begin to break some principles about the hearing of God's voice. Listen, this series, I don't want you to miss it. You know, the Lord told me something. Look at me, everyone, before you write something down. Look at me, everyone, please. The Lord told me this when we're going to start the fasting. I don't know about you, but I sense that many people feel that same way. The Lord told me that there is a window between now and the end of the year. It's like a prophetic window. In fact, you know, as a prophet, it's not everything God reveals to you. This is what we call the sovereignty of God, the supremacy of God. Meaning that you can be going, but God has another plan so you might be thinking God should reveal everything to you but it is God's wisdom to reveal to you per time because the moment God reveals everything to you extensively in your journey there is no need for faith and without faith it is impossible to please God the reason why God gives you instructions per time sometimes in riddles and clues is so that your faith life can be activated because total dependency on him is what you call the walk of righteousness and so if God reveals every single thing to you, then you don't need to be dependent on him anymore. You can keep walking. And the moment you stop being dependent on him, you've lost faith. And faith is the supply through which God interacts with man on the earth. Every single mighty thing God wants to do with you, it must require your sightedness to see the unseen, to walk into the unseen, even though you can see that I shouldn't enter into this thing. But the spirit would bid you to come and you would have to go there. But it's faith. That's why I tell people the high point of faith is the ability to see. Faith is not alone listening to the scripture and reading the scripture. Yes, faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word. But faith comes the moment God speaks to you. You know that. Okay, what scripture did Abraham read when God said, Leave thy father and thy mother to a place that I will show you? It was the voice of God. So when the voice of God is impacted into you, faith comes. When, I, uh, when God speaks, listen, we did a seven church. The Lord told me to do it. I called the pastors together, sat them down in my house, spoke to them about it. Listen, we spent, they spent a lot of money to do that thing. It cost millions to do it. And now it's going to become a norm as a church. And it's not going to just be mainland. By the time we are done, mainland. We're going, in Lekki Church, also, there's such a revival going on. In Lekki Church on Tuesday, what was that? On Wednesday, they had midweek service. Midweek service. I know Island Spirits is the spirit of Europe that is on the island. I hope you know that Europe has a spirit. If you are relocating, let me just give you a word of advice. A word of advice. A word of advice. All right, a word of advice if you are relocating. Take time to pray. 
and believe God for the people who can speak to the deep inside of you. Ah. I've seen people go, I'm telling you the truth. Someone was sharing something with me two days ago. Not a member of the new, went to a church, left Nigeria, was in a particular church before, left, then joined a church. He was trying to tell me something, he said, I'm in a church, but it's not speaking to the depths inside me. Something must be calling your, something must be calling your call out. Aye. So, this guy was saying to me, and you see, this is very important. You are not just, you are not just going just because it's an opportunity of escape. Destiny is bigger than escape. Yeah. Destiny is bigger than that. Because you see, you will know that there is what they call a Babylonian spirit. A spirit that helps you make money but collect it back from you without doing anything for God with it. And there are some of those cities you enter there, I'm telling you the honest truth, your dream, I hope you know there are three kinds of dreams. There is prophetic dream that comes from God. There is dream that comes from the devil. And there are dreams also that comes from your laziness. Oh, man, yeah. If you don't, uh, some of you have been, this fast, you've been dreaming food now. You just been seeing that you have been organizing a party. That's not God. <laughs> Sometimes you begin to have encounters. You just be, you just feel like, what's going on in my atmosphere? There's a spirit. Anyway, that's not. That's not why. That's not the purpose of this message. Wait, where did I stop? So, they, yeah, they had midweek service, just prayer service, and as at seven o'clock, they had almost about seventy people seated. Service starts by. Seven, seated, ready to pray. I tell you, there is a window between now and the end of the year. I, I, see, God has not revealed what that thing is to me. I don't know, but I know it's critical for. It's like only, uh, what's that word? A holy convocation. It's like we're stepping out of some. I'm, I'm telling you the honest truth. It's like we're about to step out of something. I don't even know what it's about, but I know in my Noah that that window has opened between the now and the year. And I tell the truth, I pray that you are truly alive and aware that something is going on in your time and you are not a spectator. I tell you the truth, I pray for you. Listen, I beg to say it. The most important ministries in our generation some of them will rise in this time frame. I'm telling you the truth. It's something I know God told me. Some of you, the career path that ought to be moved into a business owner is this period of time, T. Uh, I beg you. I beg you. Please take this. In fact, I know we are fasting to the end of the year. But some people should not stop that fast. Just some of you, just continue it. Just continue it. There's something heavy that is about to be unleashed. Something really, 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 really heavy. Glory to God. Put your hands for the Lord. Put your hands together for the Lord. All right. Genesis 21. Genesis 1, verse 3. Genesis 1 and verse 3. Genesis 1 and verse 3. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Look at that. Pause there. And God did what? And God did what? All right. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but what? By what? Does this suggest to us that God has a mouth? Is God dumb? If he has a mouth, what is the use of a mouth? 
Are you created in the likeness of God? Genesis 1 verse 26, God says, Let us make man in our own image after our likeness. Do you remember when the angel of the Lord went to visit Mary and the angel of the Lord did what to Mary? Spoke to Mary. The angel of the Lord spoke to Mary. So it tells you that spiritual beings have mouth. Now, the mouth does not mean it has to look like a headly man's mouth. Did you get that? So don't go up thinking God has this kind. But what he's trying to say in other words is that he has the capacity embedded inside of him to communicate. The same way the devil has the capacity to communicate. That's why he was able to communicate to one third of the angel as to his plans to take over the heavens. It's the same way angels have the capacity to communicate. It's the same way you have the capacity to communicate. I hope you know that every living thing on the earth, living thing on the earth, have ears. Oh, you don't know that. Jesus spoke to the fig tree. You can train a dog on how to sit down. And you can train a dog on when to back. It's embedded inside of them. So, in the creation, when God says, let us make man and let them have dominion over the fishes of the sea, he was not only talking about the fishes inside the sea. He was talking about the dominion of the waters. Everything that has to do with any water landscape, man takes authority over it. Over the birds of the air. He wasn't talking about birds flying. No, 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 no. no that's not what he was talking about alone. He was talking about the authority of the cosmos, the air. And over every crippling thing that crippled upon the earth. He was also talking about demons because demons creeps upon the earth. So when he says authority, ah, my message has changed you. Kaya. When he talks about authority, because there's somebody here, tonight ends the, that demonic dream that you have been having. Because your authority is not only bothered, you see, people only walk with the mindset of divine authority by the authority God gave to them. And in their mind, it's like God gives and takes. God gives and takes. It's like God has met that problem for some people. If you want to give me this authority, give it to me. But that's not what it is. The authority you have, you have that authority. And that authority is not only for your life. The authority speaks on the air, speaks on the ground, speaks in the waters. Anything. That's why you cannot be, at this age of your knowing God, you cannot be scared of mommy water. What does that one even mean? Because every single thing that in the air, in the, on the waters, God gave you the authority over it. Oh yeah. The air, the Bible calls the devil the prince of the power of the air. So if God gave man power over the air, I hope you know the devil is part of the air there. So you have power over him. Oh my goodness. Listen, I want to say something. Let me calm down. Believers, look at me everyone. It is your spiritual responsibility and devotion for you to understand God at a time of your life so that you are not tossed any winds of doctrine. And there is a part the prophetic anointing does. Meaning as a pastor, we can stretch forth our hands. I mean, you saw last week, Tuesday, the prophetic laying of hands, miracles, people getting healed, and we are thankful to God for um, this capacity to do that. But at the end of the day, we are eating vessels. But you see, the responsibility also on certain things is on you as a person. You know, one time I said this before, I don't think I've said it yet. A particular guy came to meet me after service and he had a condition. All right, and I was going to pray for him. And as, as soon as I wanted to lay my hands on him, I could literally feel the healing anointing. And I wanted to lay my hands upon him. And the Holy Spirit said to me, don't pray for him. And then the Holy Spirit told me what to do. So I said, I'm not going to pray for you, but I'm going to give you these books to go read. Take this book. I gathered some books. I said, take this book. Go read these books. And develop your faith to get healed from that sickness. I saw the sheer disappointment in his face. Listen. For some people, what they are actually asking for is pray for me to excuse my laziness. I don't want to be a son. I don't want to pay the price and the responsibility to grow. 
because there are some things that can be impacted into you and that's okay there's a side of that but there's a time God also requires your growth I hope you know that some challenges helps you grow do you know that and let me just say this by the spirit for some of you that challenge eh, is not the devil no. it's not the devil it's in the wisdom of God I say, yes or yes they're very powerful it's in the wisdom of God I tell you the truth that for some people you must fight Goliath first before you go and fight the bear and the lion I'm telling you meaning that you must fight what is bigger than you first but I hope while you were in the backside of the desert you knew God as the Lord of hosts because when David faced Goliath it was the knowing of God upon the premise of his wisdom of the knowing of God he responded to him thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus quickly there are two people here two people here one person You've been feeling this heat sensation in your ears. Very, it's like um, a wool or what they call those things, muck or blood or something comes out from there. Like a very hot sensation in your ears. It's, yeah, please come forward. If you are that person, come forward. Thank you, Lord. Come forward. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Quickly. Thank you, Jesus. a very prophetic one and I want everyone to listen to this you're here and you had a dream and in that dream you saw that they snatched a baby away from you in that dream as one person here you saw that they snatched a baby away from you in that dream please you have nothing to be shy about I know sometimes people get shy about things like this but if you're here come forward are you the one just come here you see you see why the prophetic is important please stop missing midweek service from today next week so tuesday's midweek service the lord told me it's going to it's me it's going to be a prophetic night and what i'm going to be doing listen is to teach on the ministry of the prophet that's what I'm going to do to teach because I know many of the people God sends to the new many are ministry gifts so we have to be equipped for that so where's the lady baby from you if you're the baby from you please come here just stay here thank you Jesus the years part right all right can I have two pastors who are anointed healing anointing you know the healing anointing is upon your life come quickly 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 healing anointing thank you Lord Jesus father hold my hands let that grace rest and let it be multiplied for signs and wonders let that grace rest and let it be multiplied for signs and wonders all right lay your hands on them any other person healing anointing both with the tri pastors healing anointing thank you Lord You deserve the glory and the honor. Healing anointing. All right. Lord, we lift our heads. Let that anointing rest in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Minister to them. Let that anointing rest in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift our heads.
speaks right God has a mouth and God speaks and so God would not create something that would go to waste do you see that the first thing you saw of him from the activities of the Godhead in the books of the beginning the first revelation of God to Moses written in the scriptures was two sides of God first the moving God and second the speaking God the Spirit of the Lord was moving. God is the movement. He moves. The same way you could see that he spoke. The second thing you saw was that he saw. So you will see in the, in the dimensions of the Godhead, you will see the moving God, the speaking God, and the seeing God. Glory to God. And so it means that God can move in your life. God can see things about you. And God can hear things. And by the wisdom of God, he has created man to also be like that. Now, it means that if it is important for God to move, for God to see, and for God to speak, it is important for you to move, it's important for you to speak, and it's also important for you to see. Somebody is seeing clearly from today. Somebody is speaking the word of God about their life rightly from today. And somebody's making that giant steps from today. And so you see in the beginning, the first attribute we see of God in Genesis in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 1. The Bible says, God who had sundered times in diverse manners. The word sundered times there means on different occasions. Alright? And never spake in time past unto the prophets, unto the fathers by the prophets. So in the Old Testament, God was speaking, all right, in the Old Testament, God was speaking directly by himself to the prophets. But in the New Testament, Jesus was speaking, it was the embodiment of God who was speaking to the people. Now, in the Old Testament, you'll find that every time God had to communicate a message or a truth, he was doing it in two ways. Is he that he speaks to them himself, by them hearing a voice, or he would send angels to them. That's what you understand by the scripture. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 12, but verse 2. God who had several occasions spoken to the fathers by the prophet. So we speak to the prophet or we speak to individuals. And then they would hear what he's saying. But in the new dispensation when Jesus came. If you open your Bible to the book of 1 John, to John, pardon me, 14 verse 23. You will see that Jesus then started to speak to his disciples. But that was limited in itself because Jesus as human cannot capture the whole earth. There's Singapore, there's Norway, there's Germany, there's Belgium. Jesus is a man and there is limitation to being a man. The limitation of being a man is that you can only be one place at a time. 
So you can't go to London and go to France and go to Italy and go to Belgium. So the coming of Jesus was great, but in itself was limiting. Because there was many truths that God had to say, but could not say it because Jesus by himself could not go to several places by himself because he was man. And this is the wisdom of God. The Holy Spirit now had to come. So that the Holy Spirit then would not take a bodily form of a human being. The Holy Spirit would then take the form of a human being in spirit. Did you get what I said? Because the Holy Spirit is spirit. But you are spirit. You know, I told you this some time ago. I think some months ago. I said the reason why many people don't hear God is because they think that it is spirit to human being talking. But they don't understand that it's spirit to spirit. Remember the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23, I pray that your whole spirit, soul, and body. So man is first a spirit. Do you see that? So God communicates to your spirit. He communicates to your spirit. Why? Because you are a spirit. And so when the Holy Spirit came, the Holy Spirit was not bothered by any location, was not bothered by any time. He could move and be in any place. We are in Nigeria right now in Ikeja. He's speaking to us right now and he's also speaking to some people somewhere in Kuala Lumpur. He's speaking to some people somewhere in Sri Lanka. He's speaking to some people somewhere in Papua New Guinea. At the same time, all at the same time. Glory be to God. So you see that in our new dispensation, it is the Holy Spirit that talks to us. Now guess what? The Holy Spirit is not an external spirit. Because the Holy Spirit always... Listen. If we want to do like word and opposite, everything on the earth was formed without void. Meaning that a human being cannot be empty by themselves. Because in the realm of the spirit, there's no empty space. That is why... Once you don't have the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit must reside somewhere. He's the governor of the earth, but he takes residence, requiring your residential permit from him in order to stay inside of you. It's not hanging around. It's inside of you. It's in you and on you. Glory to God. So also, the devil and his demons are not just coasting around. They want to take a human form to stay in a human body. So the Holy Spirit is inside of you. Meaning that everything you need to know and every decision you need to make is actually inside of you. The part of the Godhead handed down the mandate to speak to man is the Holy Ghost. And that Holy Ghost is now inside of you. The moment you gave your life to Christ, it's part of your redemptive package. It's inside of you. You see, the problem is sometimes we are not aware. We get so mixed by everything that we've known that we don't even take our time. Listen, when was the last time you just said, thank you, Holy Spirit? I know you're within me. I know you are in me. I know you speak to me. There's never a time I've come upstate to minister. There's never a time I've been faced with difficult questions. There's never a time I've been believing God for something. I don't know what to do. I would always come back to the consciousness. Holy Spirit, I don't know what to do, but you know what to do. Review what, you need, what I need to do to me. The moment I get to that consciousness, I begin to hear the Holy Spirit. And listen, when I don't hear the Holy Spirit, I'm going to go there. Let, let me go ahead of myself. Thank you, Jesus. So you see that the Holy Spirit speaks to us. You see that in the book of John chapter 16 and verse 13. Now the Holy Spirit is the voice of God on the earth. I said that before. Glory be to God. Now, why should you hear God? What is the importance of hearing God? Number one, number one, divine direction. Divine direction. Divine direction. Divine direction. Hearing God helps you, it's, it gives you a, a different path in your life. I shared with you one time when the new was still at Carry Center. You see, these are the critical. Do you know that? Your next level is embedded on the voice of God you hear or you don't hear. I'm telling you. We had carry center then. I knew it was time for us to leave. I remember that morning I woke up and I just felt the burden to pray. And so I started to pray in the Holy Ghost. Listen, you must learn how to pray in the Holy Ghost to download information. Not the euphoria of just ticking your conscious box to let you know that actually I prayed today. The reason why we pray is to hear. That's why prayer is not a monologue. Prayer is a dialogue. It's between two people. You can't just say, 
And I just said, thank you, Lord. Oh. Thank you, Lord. No. I would wa- stay upon my watch tower and I would see what it would say. So stop standing upon your watch tower eyes closed to see what it will say. You stand upon that thing to hear what it will say. Listen, prayer is not completed until God says something to you. And let me tell you something. Sometimes be still is enough something. It doesn't have to have big vocabulary. <laughs> Do you know that? Let me just say something. I feel like saying that in the spirit. Sometimes when you pray, as this happened to you, you pray hard. And when you pray, the next thing happens to you, you sleep. Does that happen to you? Do you feel bad? Most people feel bad. They say, ah, I just pray. I know for some people, they are thinking, as I pray hard like this, once I sleep, I will dream. Because they believe the primary way God speaks to them is through dreams. But that's not the primary way God speaks. You know what? The Bible says he gives his beloved. Let me tell you something. That sleep operation, that process when you slept. Now, don't go and be praying that sleep will. <laughs> but that sleep operation is a signal of what is going on in the realms of the spirit. Because God cannot take from you to create another kind if you are not at rest. Yeah. For Adam to bet Eve, God had to put him to sleep to remove. We always produce from the point of rest. Now, I'm speaking like my father in the Lord. <laughs> we always produce it's the same anointing we always produce from the point of rest amen so you know all of you in this place you were born out of rest do you know that it was out of pleasure they gave birth to you do you know that it is in God's design that the best time a man walks and produces more is from the point of rest the devil is the one that gives you the alternative that you have to do something to make something to make something happen. But I tell you the truth, the moment you start making something happen, God knows that the moment Uzzah puts his hand and helps the ark, Uzzah will boast that I was the one, remember, I was the one that saved God. And God knows that for me not to tell, for you not to say to me or to the world that you saved me, then I will withdraw. When you have now gotten to the end of my, yourself, I will step in. For some people, this is word of wisdom. The reason why you are not seeing that thing move, you are stepping in. There are some matters you have prayed. You have prayed. You have done everything you know to do. You have given. You have tightened. You have done what? You have priesthood. Prophet has laid hand. Pastor has laid hand. Nothing has shifted. You say, at this point now, God, I rest. When they say, I rest my case, it means that the file, I hand it over. I know they do again. Watch how God, in his wisdom, now picks up a file. And when God picks up your file, David in the house must remember Mephibosheth. Who is in the house of Saul that I can do favor to? Because the file has been picked up. But when you are dragging file with God, God, now me go run this thing. Now we they run this town. Say, hey, now you they run. I'm going to take file. You are going everywhere, knocking door. They say, we don't know your excuse, sir. Who are you, sir? When people start giving you too many excuses for not doing, know that your file is in your hand. Take the file to the owner of the file. The earth is the laws and the fullness thereof. The worlds and the... Ay, 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 ay. Give him the file in his hands and let him submit your file himself. Now, who can stand against the Lord when God brings a file? <laughs> Imagine God enters with a file say, just think, God gives you file and say, take. Then he says, I know the sign. In fact, the file is coming signed. He just gives you to submit. You then watch the fourth man in the fire. That the fourth man in the fire, they didn't do anything. They were just resolute that if I perish, I perish. A point of rest. Do you know that? Yeah. It's an actualization at this point. Anything that happened, let it happen. That you now say, hey, it will not happen. I will show you that I'm the God that makes things to happen. That it will make it happen by himself. Thank you, Lord. Let's close now. So divine direction, number one. Number two, protection. Protection. You know where to go to. You know where not to go to. I was talking about the story when I was praying then. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And I just woke up that morning and started praying. I called all the pastors, went all the carry center then. I said, 
all the churches were moving to our own venues. I said, we have to do it in two weeks. Why? Because God spoke to me. And the moment God speaks, there is supply available to do it. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? I mean, the, the tribe pastors have shared many testimonies. What the cost of doing that service last week alone would run almost about eight million altogether. Now, to use this facility in a year, this facility, just this is just Ikejao. Think about all the other churches. Now, next week we are going to be inaugurating the new Ife. Next week. The new year by starting. Now, just this facility, watch this. Just this facility alone for a year is almost about 30, 28 or so million. Just this one. Without any external, external influence force or any seed coming, just by giving from people like you. When the voice of God speaks. Now, all the things they did last week, they did not know, I'm sure in their mind they're thinking, well, we get the money to do all of these things. And, and of course, I mean, you know that we are not, that's the flow we have entered now. So we are doing, um, what they call it, central housekeeping. So just enjoy yourself in grandeur and, you know, meaning that it doesn't mean grandeur will still continue because there's still a church, the Kedja church would be here. Amen? But I said that to say they were able to, some people gave those things, meaning that the capacity inside people is embedded in the voice of God you hear and you don't. Now think about it. Look at all the tribe pastors. Please stand up, every one of you. All the pastors, assistants, all of you, stand up. Now think about the capacity embedded inside of these people to pastor a church, have these venues, preach the gospel. They got people saved. In some places, five people got saved. People got healed. Look at the things that happened. Now, imagine I did not hear the voice of God. Can you see that your inability to hear God's voice can cost a generation? Because you see, I say this, most people, a lot of these people, and many of you are living in my obedience. My obedience to God. But do you know there are millions of people out there waiting for you to obey? People in your lifetime must live in your own obedience. And it's the ability to hear the voice of God. Now look at how people gave. Meaning that money is inside the voice. Do you know that? People rising up to stature is inside the voice. You just see the voice as just one thing. But the voice of God to every man has a ripple effect. It's like a stone that enters into a water. And you see the circles, the ripples on it. The voice of God. It's very important. Look at the, you see, the Bible in the book of Revelation, the second coming of Christ. The theology of the second coming that John spoke about was gotten, the Bible says, this first reference, John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day when he spoke to me. Meaning that it was the old revelation we will not have if John was not in that place. Now we know that the moment the Holy Spirit comes, we don't go in and out of the spirit. We are constantly in the spirit. So the old uh, revelation was written by a man who was, do you see the things that your aunt ought to write? Do you know the amount of books inside of you? Do you know the amount of movies inside of you? Do you know the amount of institutions inside of you? Do you know the amount of businesses inside of you? Do you know the amount of daycares inside of you? Do you know the amount of families inside of you? Just by you paying attention and listening to the voice of God. We talk about Father Abraham today. Father Abraham's life was built on two premises. Non premise. Number one, the ability to hear the voice of God. Number two, the ability to obey the voice of God. It's not enough to celebrate the voice of God without obeying. Your, ver your voice of God celebration is not complete until you obey what God says to you to do. That's why I said we are moving. It was then we found grandeur. At the time we were moving to all these places, we didn't have money to do all of these things. We didn't have money. These things cost tens and tens of millions to do. But the voice of God spoke. Not like the money was in a bank account. But when the voice of God speaks, everything rises to answer. Listen, I've said this again and I don't want to, I feel led to say it. I want to hear something very powerful. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you are in this room and you are married or about to get married and you sense...
Because you see, there are many things that was taught that is correct, okay, but might not be okay for you. There is good and there is bad. But I tell you sometimes your good can be bad. Just because it's good for every other person doesn't mean it's good for you. I tell you the truth. If you are married and you have that plan, because many people say, once we marry, we're going to wait for one year before we start having kids. That's good. It's good to know each other. It's good to, and that's good though. I, I mean, my wife and I decided to wait for one year. But let me tell you something. Life is timing. And things like that are spiritual timing as well. So just because everybody say, we'll do it one year, da, 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 da. In the three months or two months, and both of you began to sense that wait. It's like something is in the air. Let's do this thing. Do it, oh. The same people that are saying one year will be the same people that will come back and say, you two, when you heard God's voice, why didn't you do it? Because remember in the pool of Bethesda, the angel of the Lord came and stirred the water. The first person that entered into it got healed. The Bible then says that anyone who doesn't enter would have to wait another season. In whether there are four welders, we have summer, winter, autumn, spring, four. In the season of a man's life, there are four as well. There are seasons of isolation, there are seasons of rising. There are seasons of consecration. There are seasons where God will say, do something in the now. It might not be logically correct. It might not be biologically correct. It might not be family correct. It might not be society correct. But it's God's correct. And that's all that matters. Do things with the voice of God. Please sit down. So how do you hear the voice of God? Number one, write this down very quickly. Oh, I said protection. Number three, manifestation of the blessing. How do you hear the voice of God? Why should you hear the voice of God? The manifestation of blessing. The blessing is activated by hearing the voice. All right? Number four, provision. Number five, for others. Oh, yeah, we hear the voice of God for others. There are times people want to travel. And I just wake up in the morning, I just sense, wait, I don't think you should travel. Oh, yeah. So many things like that. For others. That's why we hear the voice of God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. All right. Write this down. I close with this myth about hearing the voice of God. Number one, many people believe that God does not speak. Is that a lie? Number two, people believe that God only speaks to pastors and prophets. Number three, some people believe that I have to be still to hear the voice of God. I think I've shared this here before. It means I have to be still. Be still, I know. I know. Shh. You can be playing basketball and hear the voice of God. All right? Liverpool can be beaten. Man City and I'm hearing the voice of God that I win all the time but yesterday Pastor said we need to find a, another club do you see that so you don't have to be still to hear the voice of God you can hear the voice of God amen I hope you know that the voice of God and I'll take that next week the voice of God is not only the still small voice in conversations you can find the voice of God I hope you know that. In pictures, you can find the voice of God. I hope you know that you can be watching a movie. Wait, wait, let me, let me. It's not some of those, don't go and be watching all those movies and say the voice of God is there. So I say, ah, I can find the voice of God in the movie. I will watch every movie doing this fast. That's not what I'm saying. But the Bible says, Solomon, Solomon says, go to the ant and learn of the ant. Meaning that God can use pictures. Something can just walk past you now, and you, you heard something from that. Yeah. All right. And other people say that, all right, number four, God only leads through dreams. No, God doesn't only lead through dreams. Number five, divine direction is about putting out a fleece. Putting out a fleece really just means that if God wants me to marry her, let it be sunny today in Nigeria. If God wants me to marry her, let's let the um, yellow taxi go past me right now in Lagos. All right? If God wants me to marry her, let things not be expensive in Nigeria. So you see that that's not the way it works. Number six, God speaks only during your prayer time or your quiet time. That's some people believe that God only speaks when I pray, in my prayer time or my quiet time. All right? Number seven, if your heart, if your heart is with God, Okay, I wrote it wrongly. Some people believe that if you hear God's voice, you will die. The voice of God. Ah, you heard God. 
You know, we always think for the longest time that the voice of God was one very loud voice. You know, my son, you come out now. Wait. <laughs> I mean, I've not heard God like that. Now, people hear the audible voice of God. Oh, yeah, there are men of God who hear the audible voice of God. I've never, I think I've had one experience like that once. All right. Um, that was last year during the, um, uh, the third year anniversary. Third year anniversary. We're about to have our baby. That's the first time I ever heard like a audible voice of God. Pastor Debbie was in our house then. Um, the anniversary was on Sunday. And my wife, on Saturday night, started to have the, what they call that thing? Contraction. So I was now caught, prophetic net. Should I go to church and preach on the third year anniversary? Is it third or fourth? Third. Or should I follow my wife to the hospital? And the next morning, I mean, the contraction was really bad. So the next morning was like, we just have to go to the hospital. So I was already thinking, ah, 40th anniversary. Third year. So I was caught there. So I was praying. So I spoke to my wife, Pastor Debbie. So Pastor Debbie said, P.S. My wife said, okay, don't worry. You go. Go and preach. I was going to preach in Lekki first, then go to Ikeja. All right. Then... Pastor David said, just, so I said, just keep me posted. But that morning, right, I was getting ready to dress, and the Lord told me, it was like a strange, like, very audible voice, that your baby will come, but everything would have been in place. I had it very clear, and, and I knew. But, you know, <laughs> so I went, preached, while we were going, I was checking Pastor David, how far? Say, once... She feels like it's time. Just let me know. I'll turn back. I preached lucky. It was not time. I said, well, this baby, they cooperate. You know, some baby stubborn. I say, okay, you want to choose me above of God, God? I will come now. Behold, I come quickly. Revelation 22. So I, I went to Ikeja. I was preaching. You know, I was checking my phone. Pastor Debbie calling me. I mean, your first child now. You don't want to preach, finish. They now say, they now call your child. Uh, what, what name? Eh? Bide me or he preach, he preach, forget. So we finish, I finished preaching as I dropped the mic. You know this kind of preaching where you go to preach, eh? As I dropped my, I said, eh? Oh, well, oh, oh, well, oh, this baby can come now, can come now, can. Baby did not come. Oh. Just give us leg over till the next day. Amen. But you, you don't have to die by hearing the voice of God. Finally, is that does it feel for many of us that it seems like God seems unsure when he speaks to you so he tells you something today then he tells you another thing next time do you feel that way all right I'll teach on that next week Sunday when people feel like he's unsure were you blessed all right put your hands down and just say father lord I open my ears to hear you and my eyes to see you in Jesus name I open my ears to hear you I'm more conscious of your presence because I'm a carrier of your divine glory and your divine ability in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I love you because you loved me first. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We hope you were greatly blessed by today's message because God still has so much he wants to share with you. So stay connected every week to experience uplifting and life-changing moments in his presence.